Okay, so I got this little mini anvil from Tandy Leather a couple of days ago. I haven't really had a chance to try it out yet, but I'm going to be trying to make uh, riveted mail with it. Now, part of what I do with my mail is I cut the rings, and I'm going to see if I can get it to focus here, with the overlapped section beveled, which produces a more historical ring shape. So, if I can dig out a... Um, here is a mass-produced ring, and you can see that the overlapped section is pretty much square. Yep. And the hole is quite large and com completely circular. It was done with either a drill bit, um, you know, 1 16th drill bit, or a Whitney punch. Here is a ring that I made quite a while ago, back before I got this all figured out, with smaller overlap, so that's slightly better than the mass produced ring. But you can see it's still largely square. And here is a ring that I made today. And you'll note the end of the ring, the ends of the overlap, if this camera will pick them up. Um, they're not square. They're slightly tapered. This one isn't the best I've got. I've got better. Um, here. This one's good. I made this one today, and you can see the tapered off snake head look, and also in contrast, in very strong contrast to the purchased ring, which has a very narrow cross section. It's been flattened quite extensively. You know, it's uh, very thin, very flat. My ring, well the cross section isn't round, but it's not really flattened much either. It's just enough to get that overlap in. You know, that flattened overlap. So let's see how this little, um, this little anvil works. I'm going to take a, a cut and a kneeled ring, put it here, put my flattening jig on top of it, and give it a whack. And there you go. I kind of cut the overlap on this one a little too square and a little too um, a little too long. So, you know, learning process. Got to figure it out as you go. So here's another one. And this one's better. So, you know, that almond shaped or snake head overlap is very very definitely there it's nicely shaped it um, one thing you'll see on mass produced mail is that the overlap is large enough let's see if I can get it to focus yeah the overlap is large enough that it has a curve to it and what I've noticed on historical mail is that the interior of the ring forms a D-shape. That is, the overlap is short enough that when you flatten it out, it doesn't curve with the ring. So, yeah, this little mini anvil uh, from Tandy Leather actually works really good. It's not taken any dents or scars from what I just did. You, know, you can see the surface is perfectly smooth. There's no uh, scarring or deformation of the surface. So, yeah, it's a recommend. Um, hold on a minute. So now, what I've got here is a Whitney Punch. And Whitney Punches are, they're easy to come by. You can get an antique or, you know, vintage one on eBay for like 40 bucks. They're common. Roper Whitney still makes them. They're a little more expensive, like 50, 60 bucks. And you can get a knockoff at any local, um, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby for about eh, 40, 50 bucks. I picked one up and there's going to be a review of that one coming soon. But suffice to say that I don't like it. It's not good. It's, it's not terrible. It'll work. 
but you know, it just doesn't have the smooth, tight play of an original. And by the way, I'm going to just qualify that by saying I don't think the modern Whitney punches are as good as the vintage ones either. This one looks like it was like from the 1950s, and I really like it. Now, something I did to modify it, I don't have a Whitney punch bit in it. <laughs> Excuse me. What I have is a drift made from a 1 16th cobalt drill bit. So you can see it's pointed. That's in stark contrast to a punch which has a squared end and produces this kind of neat clean hole by removing a slug of metal. Original mail, that is stuff that was produced in the medieval period, the hole was produced by a drift so no metal was removed. It was just mushed outward. And they would have done it by having a handheld drift which they would strike with a hammer over a block of lead. So, you can see I've updated this quite considerably, but I get the same result with less chance of my drift breaking. So, I'm just going to center it up. Center it up one way, turn it 90 degrees, and you'll have to forgive my awkwardness here. Yeah, it looks pretty centered. So now just squeeze till it pokes through. Then, you know, you can feel it when it goes through. Pull it out. It comes off actually really easily. Um, then it just sort of drops off into your hand. And you can see the difference. The metal has been smushed outward. It's, you know, I got it off-centered. That's my fault. I'll try again. Just give me half a second. Let me square this up. Give me a minute. This sometimes takes a while. And this is something that you just have to practice. Um, I used to be a little better at this. I've been on a bit of a hiatus from mail making. So, you know, my, my uh, hand eye coordination isn't quite what it was a few months ago. So, I think it's centered, and loop, straight through. You just need to get the point through. You don't really need to go any deeper than that. And, you know, you can, it'll look a little scary. You'll think, oh god, am I bending the drift? And the answer is no, you're probably not. The Whitney punch can only apply pressure vertically. It can't apply any pressure side to side, so you're probably not going to end up bending your drift. Um, I gotta work a little on getting my overlaps lined up, but that's a minor issue. At this point, you can see really small hole, uh, mashed out metal on this side, no metal has been removed. Um, so yeah, that's most of the process. Now, uh, give me a minute, and I'll just set the ribbon as long as I can find my wire nails. If you can tell, I don't really keep everything in you know, the best, closest order. I kind of just let the chips fall where they may, so to speak. Oh, well. I think I need to make a run to Lowe's.
Dang it. Um, anyways, I guess I'll just demo my pliers anyways. These are made from a pair of end cutters that I uh, just ground the jaws off of and yeah, or down on till I got these. They originally had these big bulky black plastic handles, but I ditched those because they were hideous and didn't look medieval. So yeah, thanks for watching.